Welcome to Vintage Gaming Memories. Shall we play a game? Hello everyone, welcome back and thanks for checking out this video. This is taking some time for me to tackle it, but we're going to open up this large box right there. That one. That's been there for, believe it or not, three months. <laughs> so it's been sitting here for three months, not opened. And it, it's obviously past the amount of time for me to complain if anything was missing or damaged. Uh, it's through eBay. So um, it's my fault for not getting to that sooner. I am hopeful that everything's in there that I expect it to be. And if not, then that's just um, my problem. I'm going to clear out the top and we're going to move that over to the other side of the basement, which is where the uh, game room is, because I need a lot of space to get to that. Okay, I moved the box over into the game room area. And just to give you a little idea, the game room looks like that. That's pretty much where all my items I acquire are just organized and uh, put in place. So there's quite a bit of stuff, as you can see. Um... And there's going to be more because of this box. I really think, though, that the items in the box won't take up too much space at all. So I'm not too concerned. And believe it or not, I've been pretty disciplined with what I want to collect. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to walk around this room. All right, I think we're ready to open this up. Let's check it out and see what's in there. There will be a lot of controllers in here, but there are some other actual gaming systems as well. Maybe really one gaming system, maybe two. Can't remember, but well, you know, there's one right here. I know what this is. Here it is. What is this to you? Do you know what this is? Looks like Pac-Man, right? Well, it is. But this is the Namco Bandai. I think it's Bandai. It's a Pac-Man TV plug-and-play 12 games in one video game joystick controller. You know, you look at it, you're like, how does this work? Well, I think it opens up. Uh, let's see. Uh, I want to break it. I think you just snap it open here yep there we go well here we go we see there's a battery compartment takes four double a batteries looks to be pretty clean got the cover and then you have your connections for your audio and video and that's it so we'll test this out it's a 2012 uh, game system if you want to call it that I think it even says it on here. Yep 2012 Right there So not really vintage But again, it came with this package. I really only wanted two things that are in here So this is just kind of extra. I'll have to figure out what to do with this, but I'll test it out anyways Look at this one. Nicely packaged and looks like controllers. So this looks like a gem stick. Yep, it's a gem stick controller. Let's take a look. It's kind of beaten up a bit. Yeah. Not in the greatest condition, but that's all right. Um, we'll test this out as well. Again, not the reason why I purchased this, but it's another additional item that's in this package. And also in here, we have another controller. This is a two button controller. I think this is what they call a competition pro controller. 
Based on this 15 pin connector, it looks like that would connect with the Atari 5200. There's no label on it. Um, I'll have to test it, but once again, not the reason why I purchased this box. So let's keep going in and search for what I'm really looking for. Could it be this? All right, here it is. This is the Atari 5200 trackball controller. I believe this is the CX-53. This is not the reason why I purchased this package. I don't know if this was in working condition as far as the listing goes, but we will also test this as well. Definitely uh, dirty all over the place. Uh, a lot of times, well, look at that. A lot of times you have issues with this trackball itself. The encoder wheel may or may not work. So we'll see how this all works with missile command. Back side, yeah, it needs to be cleaned up. Pretty, pretty dirty. Not really legible on the sticker, but it does CX53. So yeah. Anyways, again, this isn't the reason why I bought this package. So let's continue. Since we're on trackballs, here's another one. This Atari trackball is the CX-22. All right, there we go. So, again, that trackball, you know, the encoding wheel itself, we'll see if it works. CX-22. Yep, it is. And I have two of these. Actually, I actually have a really good condition one to my left, which I can't really turn the camera right now, but a brand new one like in a box. So this is definitely not going to be the one I keep, but maybe a parts one, or maybe I'll just give it away or sell it. I will still test it out before I do that. And again, this isn't the reason why I purchased this package. So there's more to this. These controllers look like wireless ones. Oh, check it out. Oh yeah, I forgot. There's also a cartridge in here. This is for the Socrates Educational Video System. Now that's a different system altogether, which says it right there, which I do not own. And this is State to State, A Journey Across the United States. So again, educational software from 1989. Again, not the reason why I purchased this, but that's cool. And then in this bag with that was two controllers that I was thinking are wireless. And I would be correct. I could see the buttons. These look like a pair of Atari flashback wireless controllers. Sort of like the ones you would use, I guess, with the flashback consoles. Um, don't know if these work. But we will test it. They don't seem to be broken as far as hearing anything loose inside. Still more to come because this wasn't the reason why I purchased it either. Hmm. Well, this would be one of the reasons why. You can kind of see the color is blue. This is pretty cool. And this is one of the reasons why I purchased this. Yep, this is a track and field controller from 1984. And awesome to use this with the game track and field. Looks to be in great condition. No cracks. Uh, cord looks to be good. We'll test this out. But this is one of the reasons why I bought this box full of controllers and miscellaneous stuff. And also that was blue in that package with that track and field controller was this. Now who knows what this is? <laughs> well, besides reading it, it's an Atari device. It's a kid's controller. That's right. It even says kids 
controller. This is the CX23. Now I wrote that down because I wasn't sure. I think it might be labeled in the back here. I think it's just taped down. Let's take a look and see. Well, I don't see it on the back. I thought I could find it as I unravel the cord. But I believe it is a CX-23. And it's used for games like Big Bird's Egg Catch. And also Cookie Monster's Munch. You know, the big buttons for the kids. And specifically the functions that would work with that game. You just plug into the joystick port. And there you go. So we'll try this out to see if it does anything. Not really the reason why I bought this, but it is something I don't have, so it's kind of cool. I will keep this. What do you think that is? It's definitely not the reason why I bought this box. Not that it's a bad thing, but I do have two of these, two different ones. This is the... The Atari 2600 Junior Short Rainbow. There's a short one and a long rainbow one. I have both of those in my collection. Uh, this is definitely not something I need. But I will also test it to make sure it works. I think this is definitely going to be a giveaway to someone. And I think there's probably only one more thing left in here. If I'm not mistaken. This would be it. All right, let me pull back a bit so you can get a full view of this. There you go. So this is the Atari 2600 Power Arcade Cosmic Commander Controller by Milton Bradley. Now this is pretty rare. It's even more rare if it does work. But it's a uh, controller that came out I believe in 1983 and when you bought this brand new it would come with a game and that game would be called survival run which I do not own but that's all right because it can work with other games as well because it's just a controller not well it's not just a controller but it is a controller as far as how it functions and I'll show you more of that later it does take batteries too it takes four D sized batteries in the bottom here and why would you need batteries with this? Well, it's not wireless, as you can tell, there's a cord. But the batteries allow this to have some special effects. It will light up that display that's in the center there, and it will also vibrate. That center is really a transparent overlay, which I'll pop open to show you in a second here, because the light bulb should be right behind it. It lights up when you press the trigger button here. Now, I can't recall if this thing works or not, but if I'm trying to hold this with one hand to show you, when it's got the batteries in here and it's weighted down on the table with the, well, missing rubber pads, only has one, which I have replacement ones I can put on, but when it sits on the table with the weighted batteries on the bottom, you just move this left and right. To maneuver and then moving it front to back to move that direction as well and again this is an overlay and then there's a light bulb so this overlay when it lights up you could see what it will illuminate let's see if no reflection there I don't know it's kind of a, a novelty right I mean really don't see myself playing this often, but it's something that's cool to have. And you have to remember that the intent was to make game playing more fun. It's got the stickers in front here that look to be in good condition. Very dusty and dirty. So we'll see what happens with this one. But this is the main reason. It was this actual controller is why I pursued this purchase. And then I also wanted that track and field one. So those two were the main driver for buying all this. And waiting three months, though, I guess I wasn't that anxious to open it up. I just kind of forgot. So let me lay all this out, and we can see what came in this box, and then what work I have ahead of me to clean up and test.
Well, here's everything laid out so you can see. Uh, most of these are controllers. Well, not all, because obviously there's a Atari 2600 Junior and this Pac-Man, that 12-in-1 uh, system there, which is a controller, but it is a controller to be used for the system itself. And, well, we also have the cartridge here for the Socrates system. But for the rest of it, they're all controllers of some sort. And I'm really looking forward to trying the track and field one out and that Cosmic Commander. Now, I didn't mention what I paid for all of this. I negotiated with the seller, I believe, a little bit. Got all of this for $200. So $200, I think, is pretty fair. Maybe even good if this stuff works. I keep mentioning it. I don't really want a lot of duplicates in my collection because I think it's kind of like hoarding, right? I mean, you need so many of the same item. So I try to give it away, sell it, or whatever it may be. Have someone else enjoy it. So there's a lot of duplicates here. So I won't be keeping it. Now, if they don't work, well, of course, then I'll probably use it for parts. But if they're in working condition, I most likely will be getting rid of them in one way or another. So keep an eye out whether I uh, offer them out for free in the contest or, I don't know, maybe if you guys inquire. Next steps here would be for me to do some cleanup on all of this, test it out, let you know what works, what doesn't. And the main focus would be that one and that one. Let's get back to this in a second because it's going to take me hours, but for you, only in one second. All right, well, here is the track and field controller. It's been cleaned up and polished. Look at that shine. It looks like brand new. Again, one of the big items or main items that I wanted to get from that purchase was this controller. You can see how nice it looks. It turned out great. I think the most work was on the cord itself because that was all grimy with 40 years of dirt and whatever else that might have been caked onto it. But now it's nice and soft and cleaned up and not stressed out as far as the wrapping of the cord. All that's left for me to do is to try it out, and I'm sure it's going to work. As we can see, the insides, the contacts were being made nicely. There was nothing in there that would be shocking, so uh, I'm sure this will work. But let's give it a try. All right, hopefully this looks good. I have the track and field game loaded on the Atari 800XL, and I have the Atari track and field controller CX26125 all connected, ready to go. Now, I haven't even tried this yet, so bear with me if I... I'm horrible with it. I have played track and field many uh, times back in the day. Probably it's been over five years. I, mean, I, don't know, I probably played it within the last five years. But, you know, it's all muscle memory and remembering some of those events. Not much you need to know about the controller. It's, the white buttons are for running. The red button in the middle to jump and throw. I know there's hurdles. There's just racing against the other opponent or computer. Jumping for um, high jump. Throwing for the javelin and I think like a shot put or something. I think that's all the events. But anyways, let's give this a shot and let's try it out. And I want to try it with both buttons and just one button to see if it's any better. Because you have the option, I believe. All right, start. So the initials. Oh, let's see if this works. We haven't tried the buttons. Um, cool. Cool. The left button goes forward in the alphabet. I would think the right button goes backwards, yep. And I think the red button to select. Yep. If you could hold it down to go fast. All right, here we go. I'm gonna use both buttons for this. I don't want to pound on it because I'm not really pounding on it. I just want to press down lightly, make contacts. So I think it's going to be just as good. I know a lot of people like to bang on these buttons, but that's the arcade. Look at that. World record. 9.51 seconds. <laughs> Wasn't that hard. So this is... Um, I think it's long jump. I I know some events, that's right, some events you don't have to hit the button, just to start it is all you have to do and it runs or it moves. 
for the speed. Don't know if this is it or not. So I'm gonna hit the button one time and just see if it moves by itself and increases speed or do I have to keep pressing the button? So yeah, I have to keep pressing it. Let me do with one button and then I'm gonna hold the red button to jump because this should be long jump. Wow, jump too early. Still qualified, <laughs> I'll take that. I'm gonna use both buttons now and then see if I can switch over to the jump button. That's a foul. Geez, that was a good jump. One more time. All right, that was fun. Whoa, hurdles. Let me, well, I'll have to use both buttons, I guess. This is gonna be tough. Oh, hit the first hurdle. Hit the second hurdle. Oh, geez. Third one I hit. Let me just use one button. I can't get momentum. This is horrible. <laughs> got one, two. I got momentum now. Three, four. I won't qualify. There's no way. Wow, 19 seconds. Way too slow. I don't know if it continues or that the end. I think it continues. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is the one that, okay, let's try this. I think this is just the one button and it starts spinning. I don't have to do anything more than just hold the button to throw and release. Yep, that's the one. All right, timing. All right, this is going to be fun. Too long. Game over. I really just want to show you the track and field controller and even try it out to make sure it works. It's an awesome addition to any collection if you have uh, controllers or even if you just want something that's pretty rare, try to find this because it is a, a very cool looking piece and it's printed really nicely. It's not a cheap looking um, design in front and best part, well, I want to be biased to that, but that made in the USA, I love that. That's something I would call a success. This works, this looks good, and now on to the next one. All right, here we go with this one. This is the Milton Bradley Power Arcade Cosmic Commander controller. And this is a very rare one as well, as I mentioned in the beginning. But if it works, it's gonna be even a bigger plus because usually these are not in working condition. This has been cleaned. And you're going to probably think to yourselves, really, you cleaned it? But this is the best I can get without doing too much more to it. I mean, I could probably try to get some of the yellowing away, but it's clean as far as um, a lot of the dirt. And I did polish the overlay cover, the plastic on it, so that looks pretty good. But for the most part, the plastic all around and even the sticker or decal, I guess you can call it on here, it's in great condition. It's not peeled. There's no cracks on the plastic. Everything looks great. So we can test this a little bit before we even put it into the Atari computer as far as plugging it in. We could put four D-sized batteries in the bottom and there's some special effects that we can check to see if it works. So let me get the four D batteries in and we'll see. Nice and clean. Now these are the four rubber footings that I put on in place of the ones that were missing and the one that was remaining. You can see how much more height you get from these, which is perfect because you do want it raised up a little bit for the base at least. And it should be pretty sturdy with these hitting the table or whatever surface you're gonna have this on. Let's get the batteries in and let's try it out. The four batteries are in, the new rubber footings are there, and this thing sits nice and steady and firm. It's not rocking around like it did before because it was unbalanced. So this is ready to go. Now, what is that special effect that I mentioned that you need the batteries for? Well, check this out. Well, let's make sure it works first, because if it does work, it's really cool. If it doesn't, we'll figure that out. But all it does is, if you press this little red button, which is your fire button, something cool will happen.
Now you hear that noise? Well, you get a noise and this whole thing vibrates too. I can't really show you how that looks, but trust me, it's vibrating when I'm pushing this button down. And then of course this overlay lights up. Let me turn the lights off and put this overlay close to the camera so you can see how it looks. How cool is that? So obviously because it's not plugged in, pushing that button has no effect to the game other than actually a trigger motion, but it doesn't have any effect to what you see on this overlay and the vibration. It's always going to occur when you press the fire button. It kind of gives you a little bit of a feel of the game. Let's say perhaps you're shooting at something and you, you press the button, now you kind of feel the, the power coming behind those guns or whatever you're shooting from. So that's kind of the experience it gives you. It's kind of different. It's kind of cool. And We'll see how this is, and we're going to try it, not with the game that it came with, which would be Survival Run, but I have Missile Command in the Atari 800 XL ready to go. So let's see how this looks and feels. All right, ready to go here. We have everything connected. Uh, batteries. Let's see. Yep. All good. Let's press Start, and let's try this with Missile Command and the Cosmic Commander controller. So let's first try the button to fire. And that seems to work. If I push forward, it goes up, back, down. Twist to the left, goes to the left, to the right, goes right. So it all works. Obviously, I'm not doing a good job in this game, but I just really want to test the, the movement of this. And it seems to work great. If I go towards me, it goes down, forward, goes up. Twisting to the right, we'll go to the right. So it's eight directional because you can go up and to the right and it will go to the top right like that. And bottom left. Let's see if I can do that. There we go. Now, I don't believe this a controller is ideal for, for a lot of games for the reason, as you can see, it's not easy to use. But it's a cool novelty for sure. It's a good talking piece to have in your collection. And again, very rare to have one that's actually working. Like this so I'm pretty happy with this controller and I think this is a success on to the next one all right let's try the Namco Bandai Pac-Man TV plug-and-play 12 in 1 games on this controller and this came out in 2012 so definitely not vintage but still pretty cool let's give this a shot I have batteries in there monitor is on and we will turn it on Looks good. Let's try Pac Man. Kind of odd to hold this, but don't need to push the buttons, so it's not too bad. Overall, I guess we could say this one works. Okay, next up is the Atari Trackball, the CX-22 model. We're going to try this with Missile Command. Looks like it works fine. Now let's see if the buttons work. Let's try the one on the right. One on the right works as well. Another success. On to the next one. Since we have Missile Command running in the background, let's try this out with the gem stick. Seems to move in all directions, and the fire button surely does work. Another success. Let's continue on. Okay, we're going to test out this two-button controller 
It's a Competition Pro 5000. And a good way to test both buttons is using this game, Pole Position, because I know it takes up one button for gas or accelerating and the other one for braking. I think it's left is gas, right is brake, but we'll find out. I'm going to hold the gas down, or the left side, and it is the gas. Now, if I hit the brake while I'm holding the gas, it should still slow me down, and it does. So I know that works. Now let's try to maneuver with the joystick. Left or right seems to be good. Okay, now let's try another game just to make sure we can go up and down since this one does not have any function for up and down. Yep, it's a no-brainer, Pac-Man. Let's see, make sure this all works in every possible direction. And it does. No need to continue on with this. We know this one's a good one. Okay, we're going to try this Atari 5200 trackball controller, which is the CX-53. We'll try that with Centipede here. Let me turn the lights down. Well, they, the ball is moving nice, up, down, right, and left. The fire button works on the one side. I'll try the other side here in a second. And that side works great, too. So, this looks pretty good. Now, I did open it up, and I did clean the, the rollers and the insides completely so it's really clean and good condition I also lubricated it I didn't expect anything else but it to work of course now let's try some of the buttons here let's pause I think everything looks good on this one the keypads are working as well I can select one or two players I'm pretty sure this is 100% working condition, so on to the next. All right, this is the Atari 2600 Junior Short Rainbow, all cleaned up and connected, ready to go with the game Berserk. Let's hope this works. So far, so good, I believe. All right, let's start. Oh, yeah, nice. Uh, I think this is a successful test because the game loads, controller works. Let's um, do one more thing here. Let me change the, the option the selection. Let's see if those buttons work. So they are going from, as you can see, the bottom 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1. So that works. Of course, start works because I just started the game. So another good test. This has been turning out to be pretty good. Everything worked. I don't think I had one issue yet, so hope I didn't jinx myself by saying so. Let's continue on with the remaining items to look at. All right, let's test out the Atari Kids controller, which is the CX-23 model. And we're going to test it out with Cookie Monster Munch. Now, there is supposed to be an overlay that comes with the game, and it goes over this controller so you can use the right buttons to navigate throughout the game. And, of course, I don't have that, but easily online you can find the instructions and figure out which buttons do what, which I already know. So, let's give this a go. All right. So, I believe it's going to be the 2, 4, 5, 6, and 8 buttons I'll use. To go up, down, left, right, and I think five, it said to eat the cookie. So let's try this. Well, four works. I hit the wall. Oh, there's the cookie. This is for kids, <laughs> so it's not going to be too difficult. There we go. Got the cookie. 
bring it back to the cookie jar. Well, okay, well, I'm gonna call this Atari Kids Controller a success. Seems to work fine, and it is in good condition too, so I didn't think it would have any problems. Can't judge a book by its cover, but this one I sure will. Okay, I think I'm done here. There were 11 items in that box that I purchased, and all were clean and brought back to life visually and functionally for at least a couple of them. We have the Atari track and field controller back there. That's the CX26125 from 1984. We have the Milton Bradley Cosmic Commander controller from 1983. We have the Bandai Namco Pac-Man TV plug and play 12-in-1 video game controller from 2012. We have the nice little Atari trackball. That's the controller CX22 from 1983. And we have over there the Gemini Gemstick VG170 from 1983. And in the back there is the Coin Control Competition Pro 5000, which was rebranded in 1987 to HEP Controls. But that one there was from 1983. And in front and center here we have the Atari 5200 Trackball Controller. That one is the CX53 from 1983. And to the far right, we have the Atari 2600 Junior, the short rainbow that came out in 1984. The blue controller there, that is the Atari Kids Controller CX23. That one came out in 1983. And that cartridge right behind it there is the State to State cartridge from 1989 that uses the Socrates Educational Video System. And last but not least, behind that cartridge, you see those two controllers. Those are Atari Flashback wireless controllers around the 2012 time frame. Be sure to comment down below. Love to hear if you had any experience or maybe memories from these items. The bulk of these, well, to be exact, eight of them, were from 1983 and 1984. And then there are a couple that I mentioned from 2012. Of the 11 items here, I was able to successfully test nine. The only two that I couldn't verify were the state-to-state -state cartridge because I don't own a Socrates educational system. And those two Atari flashback wireless controllers there, I didn't test them because I needed to search for a flashback in my collection that supports wireless controllers. Now I know that I do have one, at least one, and I just don't know where it is. I might have it in the box still somewhere in my storage, or maybe it's on my shelf somewhere just hidden. But regardless, this was a great purchase in my opinion. I got the two controllers I really wanted, and they both worked. And all the rest are just a bonus. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate your time and interest. And until next time, keep your gaming passion from the past alive by living it today. Take care, everyone.